Hey, welcome back to Biz Talk TV. I'm your business host and guide, Michael Rager, and we've got an in-studio guest, Judy Huang Yim. How are you doing today, Julie? Great to be back. Well, good. I I'm good that we let you back in. You know, it was, <laughs> it was so much fun last time. We figured, we, what the heck, let's do it again. Yes. All right, so let's talk a little bit about growing business. We talked about it off camera. We're going to talk a little bit about consistency and persistency. Now, you're a CEO. How important is it for you to be consistent in you know, how you show up, how you treat people, how you do what you do? How important is that? It's uh, the most important thing. And because if you are the leader, you lead by examples, right? So when you're doing your work and you're not consistent, let's say you have your weekly meetings and you don't show up one week, that's, that just tells a lot. So not only we have to be consistent internally with our team members mm -hmm. showing up by example, but even with our clients, you have show consistency. We started really small in manufacturing world, but as we grew, we also stayed consistent with our customer service, our quality, because you don't treat clients differently in our core values. We treat small customer, medium customers, and large customers the same thing. So consistency is definitely the key. Yeah, no, it's very important. You got to be there. And, you know, your people really don't care about what you say. They care about what you do. They're out there watching mm. you, right? They want to mm -hmm. see how consistent is Julie. She showed, and, and that's an important thing. Does she talk to us respectfully? Does she, does she you know, ask mm. us how our day is going? Just simple things. How have, have you ever, I was listening to uh, John Maxwell today on the way in. He was talking about some leadership landmines. And he says, we all hit them. What's one of the things that's kind of like blown you up a little bit as a leader as you come in about your consistency? So one thing I love about building a business is really having fun. As a leader, if you are out there and you really just, you're trying to recruit people. And to me, recruiting, it has a lot to do with marketing too. It's your personality, your character, as we kind of talked about off screen, your character says a lot. So as who I am and showing up exactly who I am, doing exactly what I say, what I'm going to do. And, and that part is really how, you know, in terms of your turnover rates and mm -hmm. things like that, it, it is so much better for your business. You know, one of the things that's really funny with me is people when they see me here on this show, and I, they see me in a sport coat. I swear to God, you talk about the <laughs> consistency. I'm in shorts and flip flops all the time. I mean, when you own a, you own a business called Teach Your Business to Fish, they're not expecting you to show up in a suit and tie. You know, it, it kind of is what it is. Or whiteboards and whiskey. That's true. You know? Like, I, I'm not really dressed like this all the time. <laughs> I have clothes to change because we have a warehouse, right? Right, right, right. I'm not going to wear my heels and all these, like, nice things. My hair is up. You do what you have to do, like we're talking about, being yeah. persistent. Well, let's talk consistent. about persistency now. Mm. Now, persistency is important. It's it's, it's staying focused. And, mm. and, and one of the things I'm going to bring to it, uh, when we were fishing this weekend, we were out there, and we had a really rough day one, and we went back day two to the same place, and we just crushed it. You know, we were just persistent and consistent in what we did. You know, we, you talked a little bit about how you started and how, how it took you time. How has your persistency helped you get from, you know, where you started, you know, the music career, you know, coming over and all this stuff to becoming a CEO of a company now? That is a great three-day story. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, you know, long story short, uh, since we have a small segment, real quick, I used to do door-to-door -door for two years straight on commission. And if you don't have persistency, I mean, you're talking about wearing those heels in the heat, and we, we went to Virginia in the snow. So in my mind is always like, you're going to get the next yes. The, the more no's I'm getting, I'm going to go to the next yes. And it has proven over and over and over. Um, with our manufacturing company, it's the same thing. We all need leads, right? And we all need to be persistent, following up. Like people always talk about the money is in the follow-up. And we mm. absolutely do that. So that persistency is also very critical amongst like uh, internal employees. Yeah, it, it really is. And and seeing how we go and what we do and our employees see us and when you're a leader like the CEO, you know, your job is really to cast vision, see how things are going, to make sure people understand where we're going and why we're going there. And you can't be changing on a dime, can you? Well, the changes, I think, it, it needs to be thought out. It mm. needs to have a strategy because 
we are all different. And so mm. you can't manage everyone the same way, right? Mm, right? So you show persistency, but some people just need that motivation. Some mm -hmm. people need a one-on-one -on -one talk, and uh, and some people just need a, a group team building event. So then they can kind of get back into it. Mm. And I know as a CEO, I kind of have this, and it's not just a CEO, but as Julie, which mm. I just have this personality of being persistent. But that doesn't mean other people have the same thinking as I do. Mm -hmm. So it is my job to actually motivate and make sure that they get mm -hmm. on track. Yeah, it's following, you know, it's being a leader. Mm -hmm. Leadership, uh, again, I'll go back and quote a little bit of John Maxwell, is, is, is leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And if you're not the most influential person at your company, you're going to have issues. Right. And I want to talk a little bit about change there. We talked about it and, and how do we keep people on change. You know, we just came out of a pandemic. We had a whole bunch of things going. We got back. And I'm sure you, you made some changes in the company as you went. You know, one of the things I teach is, you know, setting your drag is setting the direction. Then you got to expect resistance because people are not going to understand why you as the CEO say you're going to make this. Then you make adjustments after you go ahead and you take your wise counsel and then you just go and do it. So how did you handle change coming out of the persistence, out of the persistence, out of the pandemic into where you are now? Right. So like the changes, it wasn't comfortable. It was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, though, when you are really uncomfortable, mm -hmm. it kind of tells you you're in the right spot. Right. Because like my whole team, they were really uncomfortable about, OK, we're going to work remotely and we're mm -hmm. in manufacturing. Right. So I had to like change shifts. Till today, we are still working remotely, by the way, um, just because we have adopted that change. And now maybe having to change back, I don't think my team would be more scared than how they were before because we had gone through changes together through mm -hmm. all those times. So if anything, they know I have their best intentions in mind mm -hmm. that um, we're all gonna grow together. But may I ask a little bit of that, you know, having a manufacturing company and going to work at home, you know, in a pandemic, how difficult was that? And how long did it take you and your team to put together a strategy to realize that you could actually, you know, be effective and execute in that uh, situation? It, it took a, a little bit of time. It took a few quarters. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, sit here and say it was so easy. We are so great. No, oh. it took some time, really. Um, and we obviously had people that just didn't think this was ideal mm -hmm. and left the company. We had people can't come back to the right, company right, right, right. And, and those things. But, you know, like, it's really showing that that you care, right. I think is probably going to be the biggest thing through mm. these changes. You care about not just the way I look at my um, team members, I actually don't really call them employees, is that it's not just about right. you, it's about you and your family. Right, right. Mm. Well, it goes back to that people don't care about how much you know, they care. They, they want to know how much you care. And, sure. and, and that's what it's about because one of the most important words that we hear all the time in business is culture. And I've always been that, you know, told that culture eats talent for lunch. So we've got to have the right culture. And so maintaining that culture through a pandemic and something like that, people leaving, people coming, people mm -hmm. going, how difficult was it to maintain your culture at that time? You know, the, the culture really starts from your core values. Mm -hmm. And I really encourage all mm -hmm. small business right. owners or any businesses, you have a core value. Right. Our core value is the SOL system. So it's system attitude and work ethic. So the other two, I always tell my team, it comes from you, mm -hmm. right? So the culture there, it's kind of funny because during the pandemic, it was so hard. Everyone was just so stressed. So I started printing these like motivational, not like really cheesy ones, but like, don't forget to breathe, yeah. smile. Like they're all over <laughs> our office right now. So that's something that, you know, in terms of changes, uh, I hope that could help people. Yeah. I don't know if it did, but you know, I couldn't ask my, my team members. <laughs> well, I think it goes back to, you know, my favorite TV show as a business coach. If you haven't watched Ted Lasso, it's all about it. I mean, the big mm -hmm. sign believe, you know, yes. that's what it's about. And it's, it's, it's motivating that little way. And that's where you need to go. And as a CEO, that's what you need to do. So let's give one, uh, one last tip for CEOs on how to be consistent and how to be persistent. Yeah, so one tip I would say is make sure that you do not miss your routine no matter what. And don't give up. That's it. That's it. I'm, I'm going to put one in there, smile. 
Thanks, uh, Mom. <laughs> yes, it, it, yes. It really is. Is I know some business owners that if they're having a bad day, they bring that bad day in the office, mm -hmm. and we we can't bring as as leaders. We cannot bring our bad day to the office. If we have a fight with our spouse before we get there, our kids are getting a pain in the butt before they get on the school bus. We get stuck in traffic. Somebody says something. To, the minute we get in that parking lot, that smile's got to go on. And the only way the frowny, grumpy face comes back in is when you're locked in your office and nobody can see you. I mean, right. how important is that? I mean, do you see it's, that? It's so important because you're, it's the atmosphere that right. you're creating, right? And then mm -hmm. it's contagious. Like we always talk about negativity is contagious, yep. but also positivity is yeah. very contagious. And they're always like, how do you get so happy? I'm like, just think about happy things and be grateful about the things yeah. that we do have. And so like the atmosphere, especially music, actually. That's yeah. one thing I do put on at an office. We nice. have like upbeat music and things like that. Well, that's nice. That's <laughs> nice. Well, I'm telling you, that's, that's one of the things that's about there. People forget that positivity is just as easy to obtain as negativity. Right. And it's just, it's all up here. That's what we got to do. Julie, I love it when you come in. Um, you know, hopefully you come out and uh, join us this Friday, cigar, or Cigars and Old Fashions. Yeah. I'd love to have you come out. If you're interested, find us around uh, White Boards of Whiskey, White Boards of Whiskey next Wednesday. We'd love to have you come out there too. People, you can not just meet me, you can meet the famous Julie. You just gotta follow <laughs> her on social media. She does, her and her husband do some really, really cool stuff. It is fun. It's pretty fun. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I had the talent to lip sync like you do, <laughs> but uh, you know, we can get in there. But that uh, take top fun, yep. There we go. So, all right, this is Michael Rager, your business guy here on Now Media Television. We're gonna be back with more Biz Talk TV right after this.